Hi, this is Mr. Merrill, and uh, we're going to do some practice problems involving force diagrams that uh, have components and some other tricky stuff in them. Now, uh, basically every force diagram problem is going to be a little bit different, but hopefully these get you to think about uh, some less obvious scenarios. So we have a BB rolling down a tube full of alcohol, just like our lab a few weeks back. We're going to identify our system as just the BB, nothing else and we're going to condense that system to a dot and we're going to draw some axes so uh, when we're drawing these axes uh, some of the simple questions we can ask ourselves are what is the direction of motion or what is the potential direction of motion so since we're rolling down a ramp like this our direction of motion is just parallel with that ramp and we'll draw another axis perpendicular to the one I drew there. So this is going to be our parallel axis and this is going to be our perpendicular axis. So we're going to think about um, some forces now. So first of all we're going to have the force of gravity and just like always that's going to point straight down doesn't matter whether uh, we have a tilted axis or not gravity is still going to pull things straight down towards the center of the earth so we'll go ahead and call that F sub G the feeler is the BB and the dealer of the gravitational force is the earth uh, what's some other forces we have here well um, we're going to have a normal force that's rolling on the inside surface of this tube. So that's going to be a normal force. I'll go ahead and use a green color for that. And that is going to be, whoops, let me just back up. That is going to be perpendicular to the surface. So we're going to go straight off like that, perpendicular to the surface. And we can indicate that by saying this is F normal. Uh, the feeler is the BB again and the dealer is the tube. Now let's think of some other forces. Those are the two obvious ones. Some less obvious forces is perhaps the drag. Uh, so this BB is going to experience some drag through the fluid because otherwise these two forces alone are not going to balance out. So uh, we can use a blue color for that. That's going to be in the opposite dire direction of the motion. And so that is a drag force. The feeler is the BB. The dealer is going to be the alcohol, the fluid it's moving through. So uh, now we could add one more. I won't, but uh, BBs don't float in water, but they do experience a buoyant force. And if I were to add this to my picture, there would be a buoyant force that would point straight up. Um, as in to, uh, like every buoyant force is going to point straight up, opposite the direction of gravity. And if I were to include it, I'd do something like that. And the reason I made that so small and the reason I'm not going to include it is because so with something the volume of a BB, we're talking about a buoyant force that's so small it's not practical to worry about. So um, you could include it. It would actually technically be correct to include it. But uh, to simplify our diagram, I choose to ignore it. And there's plenty of situations where you can do that. So for instance, you're not going to include a drag force for a, a, you know, a, a guy taking a walk in the park. Sure, there is a drag force there, but it's so small, it just confuses the diagram by adding it. So we really only want to, uh, you know, document forces that are going to have a big impact on our situation here. So uh, we only have one off-axis force here. That's the force of gravity. So we're going to take some time to break that up. Um, it has two components. Now, notice when I go to draw this component that I'm coming off the axis and I'm trying to draw this component uh, let me actually use a dash line here I'm trying to draw this component parallel to this axis here 
The big mistake is just to come and draw the component horizontal because you're so used to thinking about the components being either horizontal or vertical, but we need to think about the components as being parallel to the axes we've drawn here. And I'm also going to draw a second component that is goes down like that and is parallel to this axis here. So you can see how I've broken down this gravitational vector, force vector, into its two components. And we can go ahead and start talking about congruency. So uh, if we consider the forces at play here, we have one uh, normal force vector here and one vector here. These are the only two vectors on the axis. So for things that add up to um, the things that add up to be zero, those two vectors must be congruent. So this is, it keeps one giving me a arrow. I don't want an arrow. Okay. So that is congruent to that. And then if we look at our parallel axis, we, again, we only have two vectors. So for things to add up to be zero, that must be congruent to that. And that will pretty much complete our force diagram. We may want to come off the side and say that the sum of all the forces or the net force equals zero. And uh, we should expect this because it, uh, we saw the BB moving with a constant velocity. Okay, so that's one example. I'm gonna do one more. Um, this one has some interesting ideas to it. So we have a burglar holding a safe on a ramp. So let's draw a system boundary. Okay, and draw a dotted line around just the safe, trying not to include anything else. All right, and then we're gonna take that system and condense it to a single point and think about the forces that act on the system. So again, here we have another situation where it would be wise of us to tilt our axis so if there was going to be motion, that motion would occur up and down the ramp. So we'll draw a, and I'll go ahead and make this a black line. That motion would occur up and down the ramp. So I'll go ahead and draw our axes like that. We'll go ahead and label this as our parallel axis. And this is our perpendicular axis. Okay, so let's begin to think about the forces. Just like last time, we can go ahead and immediately uh, talk about the gravitational force, and just like every problem, it's going to point straight down. That is not the size that I want that. So we have the gravitational force pointing straight down. We label that as type feeler dealer. So type gravity, the feeler is the safe and the dealer is the earth. We have a normal force. Go ahead and make the normal force go straight up like that. So type normal, the feeler is the safe, the dealer here is going to be the ramp. We're definitely going to have a tension. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw this tension a long, because why not? I mean... No one's saying how hard I'm pulling the safe, so I'm going to say I'm pulling it pretty hard, which is causing a ten there to be a pretty big tension. So we'll call that F sub T. Feeler is the safe. The dealer here is, let's say, uh, uh, say rope. We don't want to just put R because we've already used that. So, um, 
let's say uh, we can go ahead and leave it like that. I'm going to go ahead and break down this gravitational force into components. I'll use some different colors here. Um, so we'll say this is the parallel component of the gravitational force. And we can also pick that and draw a perpendicular component of the gravitational force. So I think I forgot to actually label these last time, so I'll go ahead and do that. So this would be F sub G parallel. And this would be F sub G perp. Now if we just take a look at this, I, I said we were applying a pretty big tension here, and that's fine. We're going to look at this, and just visually, it doesn't seem like this force vector is the same as this. Now, it may be, but let's say we're pulling especially hard on this safe, but it's still not moving, it's still at rest. What's, what's one other force we can consider here? Well, we don't have to have it, but say we're pulling especially hard and the safe is still not moving, well, maybe that's because we have the presence of a uh, static friction. Uh, force of static friction. And how, what way would that have to be? Well, if this tensional force is bigger than this parallel component of the gravitational force, the only way that would balance that out is if our static friction pointed this way. We might call that F sub S and the dealer is the ramp. Well, that's fine. And you say, okay, well, so does static friction always point down the ramp? Well, maybe not. Because let's say we had we weren't pulling very hard at all. Let's say the tension in the rope was very, very small here. Well, then you can see visually this plus this is not gonna add up to equal this. So uh, if this gravitational component is bigger than the tensional force, well then we're going to have a scenario where this static friction is going to actually work in this direction so that these two add up to give us the same as this. You can see the extreme case of that is what happens if I wasn't pulling with any tension. Let's say take the tension away, well then static friction would have to do all the job. Let's say if I was pulling exactly with the same force as that uh, component of gravity. Well, then the tension would be exactly the same as that and we would have no need for static friction. That's why static friction is confusing for people because depending on the scenario, it could be one way, the other way, or not there at all. Um, so without further information, we really don't know. I'll go ahead and draw it like this, but it's impossible to tell given only this information. Uh, but I figured I'd show that to you because it's a, a rather interesting example that makes you think. Um, other than that, we've got everything labeled, uh, and that pretty much concludes our problem. We might go over here and say that the sum of all the forces equals zero, and we could also say that this is congruent to that because these are the only two forces on that axis. All right, so those are two examples. Um, if you have any questions, just send me an email.